So every year around the time of a new COD launch, we do a little bit of a buyer's guide because like many, I'm usually on the fence. Do I get the upgraded editions? Are they actually worthwhile? Are there any hidden benefits from one to the other? And so in my decisions every single year of deciding, hmm, what's the best choice for me? The pros and cons list that I make, I like to share it with you that if there's anyone that needs some additional context or anything, perhaps this can help you out in some way, shape or form. This year is a little different. This year, I don't want to just do simply the mention of the versions of the game. Instead, I want to put this all together in a sort of before you buy video, because this year in particular, there's a lot more in regards to context that's necessary, warnings and heads up for what you may be purchasing and more. Today, we're taking a look at it and examining it all. So hopefully along the way, providing a bit of value and maybe saving you a few bucks here and there. Drop your thoughts as we go along, drop a like if you enjoy the video and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Black Ops 6 ahead of the launch and beyond. We're pushing towards 600,000 subscribers. So if you'd like to join us on that lofty goal of attempting to get there by launch or at least closing that gap further, perhaps you're a part of that 75% of viewers not subscribed. I'd love to have you in the community. For now though, let's jump into it. So first and foremost, a few housekeeping items and disclaimers. Number one, the best version to buy is the version you don't buy at all. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome and everything. And if you're dead set on that, totally cool. This video isn't for you in that case. This is just to give further context and clarifications for those that want it, but have a few questions. Totally cool again if you're not getting it. Seriously, more power to you. I entirely understand. Spend your money on what you enjoy playing. Gaming is meant to be an enjoyable thing, so do whatever gives you that enjoyment. Also, for the first time this year, there actually is a way to play without buying it specifically. We'll get there in a second. Number two, sales are absolutely a valid reason to wait if you don't really care about jumping in on the launch rush. Again, totally cool if you want to do that. The information here hopefully is still going to be applicable and be beneficial, just slightly adjusted for when those sales roll around, because some of those things like bonus content you'd get with each version, you might not necessarily get it at that point. But anyways, let's jump into the first versions available. Number one, the physical standard edition. This across the board is just simply going to be cross-gen only now. Back with, I believe it was Black Ops Cold War, we did see some physical versions split between generations. Like I think it was PlayStation that had a PS4 and a PS5 version that didn't come with an upgrade to the next generation version. By default, you had to buy the sort of premium upgrade if you wanted to, but now every single physical version will be cross-gen. So you end up having the ability to play it on Xbox One to Xbox Series X and PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. So you won't need to buy any upgrade or anything like that. But as for bonuses you get with the physical standard, well, as of right now, nothing. The last couple of years, the majority of the bonuses have been digital only and things like the beta access obviously has already happened. So physical, you just get the physical media, which is always nice to have. It's some certain retailers like GameStop. There will be a physical collector's steelbook that you can end up getting, but that's about the only bonus for the physical standard. Digital standard, this again is cross-gen by default, but no physical disc. You just simply purchase it from your Xbox, PlayStation, or PC storefront, and you end up getting things like the Woods Operator Pack available in both Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 6. The only only thing that will be available is a carry forward item, as we'll touch on in a second. And then the Reflect 115 camo, which is only for Modern Warfare 3, unfortunately. I think it'd be really cool if that was also applicable to Black Ops 6, but alas, it is not. And then finally, the Vault Edition for $99.99 is essentially your Digital Deluxe Edition. Bonuses include the Woods Operator Pack and the Reflect 115 camo, as we just mentioned, that is a just continuation of that digital standard. But you also end up getting the extra bonuses of the Hunter vs. Hunted Operator Pack, with skins for Park, Adler, Brutus, and Klaus, the Mastercraft Collection, which are Mastercraft blueprints for the Ames 85, LR762, Marine SP, Jackal PDW, and Combat Knife. You get the Gobblegum Pack, which is 12 high rarity gobble gums which have not yet been detailed which to use immediately in zombies and then the season one black cell bundle which is 1100 cod points plus 20 tier skips which a big note if you care about tier skips more than anything else the vault edition this year actually does not give as much directly comparable to last year and the year before that that's our first sort of hey you should probably know this before you buy it type of thing what i mean by this is that it's advertised black cell and 20 tier skips well last year it was said black cell and 50 tokens which if you just look at it first glance would imply okay you get the black cell bundle plus the 20 or 50 tokens here at this. But if you took a look at it last year and really paid attention to the wording, it was something that wouldn't have surprised you when you logged in with season one that you only got 50 tier skips the battle pass and the 50 tiers not the black cell bundle which comes along with 20 tiers normally and then an additional 50. 
So you only got 50 total, 30 bonus out of that. So this year with the same wording applied, you're only getting that battle pass bundle. You're missing out comparably from last year on an additional 30 bonus tier tokens. So I personally think that dilutes a little bit of the value of that, but we'll get there in a second. And then finally, Game Pass is an option this year where for players on Xbox for the first time in COD history, you can end up getting the game for no additional charge whatsoever. The standard edition, that is. There is a slight upcharge if you want to get the Vault Edition through Game Pass, but it is something that you don't have to pay for the game this year if you're already subscribed to Game Pass. Now, as for the variations of the game, again, one more thing to note here is that there are no collector's editions for Black Ops 6. Personally, I kind of think that's a bummer. The last collector's edition we had, if I'm not mistaken, was the Modern Warfare 2019 Dark Edition, where you ended up having the NVGs, which were really cool. I always love that kind of just collector stuff. And again, the fact we're moving away from physical media, I actually really liked having the discs and everything. So again, still kind of a bummer there. I understand from a business practice, you're trying to minimize costs when it comes to the price to press games to disc and distribution fees like that. But again, I'm always that guy that loves to have the physical article in their hand. But anyways, that's the things you should know about the versions of the game. But let's talk about some things in regards to before we get to the content at hand in the game, some things you should know about the game overall. Number one, internet is always required with Black Ops 6. That goes for multiplayer, zombies, and even campaigns. So it's going to be something that you might see some unfortunate situations where like a couple of weeks ago, you had outages for Xbox and PlayStation. The networks themselves were down. So it's not like it was something that was regional or it was something that specific players bandwidth was dropping the ball. It was the actual networks. So if that happens, your purchase is not going to be able to be played. Now, usually if there is downtime like that, it doesn't last very long, but in the event that it does, just know you're not going to have an offline mode in any capacity. And that also kind of applies to something that if you're like ultra into getting the games as early as possible for anyone in the past that has gotten a copy ahead of the street date, meaning the date the game launches, maybe you're really diehard and you really want to play a little bit of extra game time. Just know that because of that, you're paying an upcharge and risking that common eBay scam for nothing this year. Same with last year, since actually the COD HQ has been the central location for all COD games. Even with a physical disc, you cannot enter the game since it's still region locked on the server side of this, not the actual client side where you have the game that would usually bypass those mechanisms. You're not going to have any luck, so just keep that in mind. I was curious last year to see if that would be the case, but it didn't do anything for me. Also, download sizing, the box art mentions it's requiring 137 gigabytes of storage. So that's a lot, especially considering it was just mentioned that we had an update for the COD HQ to consolidate a lot of things and better optimize that space, but it appears the opposite at the first glance here. 137 gigabytes of data is a ton of data. So just bear that in mind about the game at large. But now a few things that you should know before you buy about the game itself, the gameplay. Campaign, firstly, as we've mentioned, and we won't stay on it too long, there is no early access. If this was last year, as of a couple of days from now, we would end up having hands-on time with the campaign. But this year, that's no longer the case. Sound like a broken record, but just for the sake of being thorough, it's not going to happen for whatever reason that may be. Xbox maybe not wanting to dilute the value of day one on Game Pass. Maybe Activision or Microsoft really didn't like those reviews of Modern Warfare 3 last year, and so they're just not doing any sort of review events or early access because of that. We don't know, but it's not going to be a thing. Number two, rewards for the campaign are actually pretty enticing this year. If you're buying the Vault Edition or considering just the sake of the weapons and the permanent unlocks they afford, well, you can get those for free by simply playing the campaign. Same weapons, not the same build, but same weapons. The way the prestige system works this year is that blueprints, either earned or purchased, will act as permanent unlocks for those weapons that you get the base weapon plus the blueprint permanently unlocked even after you prestige and everything relocks once again. So there is some value to taking some time before you jump into multiplayer or zombies and doing the campaign. It sets you up with five weapons that you don't have to spend a permanent unlock token on once you start getting through those prestiges. So nice little bonus there. As for the multiplayer things to be aware of, one of the big things here that we haven't really talked about too much in regards to content on the channel is that there's no large mode support right now. This was something that we kind of thought was going to be the case. It was 
mentioned here and there in developer interviews and everything, and it didn't look like it was going to be a focus this year, with the prime content being 6v6 and 2v2, like face-off or strike content. So we saw that all the maps and everything were medium to small-sized, but the box art now showcases 2 to 12 players online only. That doesn't mean in the future that they can't add something like 9v9 ground war or something, but it does not appear that if you are somebody that loves ground war that you're really going to have any support this year. So that might be something that tips the scales. Maybe you pass on this one, maybe you buy it, but just do be aware of that. The unified ranking system across all modes also means that if you don't want to spend the money right now on Black Ops 6, like if you just are like, oh, I'll wait for a sale, again, totally fine. And if you do decide to do that, you can jump into Warzone perhaps first if there's no sale before then and a season one integration. And with that season one integration, you can start ranking up all those weapons and plunder in whatever modes may be available there. And it'll be something that you can end up getting all the progress towards your Black Ops 6 rank if you decide to upgrade at that point later or whenever it may be. But all for free. You don't have to buy the base game at that point. Additionally, another big point to know is, of course, things do not transfer from Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 to Black Ops 6. We talked about this recently. There is no carry forward, save for that Woods Operator pack that is available as an operator right now in Modern Warfare 3, but Woods is also going to be an operator in Black Ops 6. So it's just a crossover there as is, but anything else, does not matter camos weapons maps none of that kind of stuff will be transferring from modern warfare 3 to black ops 6. it will all be transferring to warzone but if you are somebody that cares more so about the mainline paid experience you're not really into battle royale plunder resurgence whatever the case and you don't care about that kind of stuff none of what you've worked on the last two years will transfer just like every cod game before modern warfare 2 and modern warfare 3 that changeover will not persist year over year it's a brand new fresh start here with this so that could be, again, something that tips the scales for you. There also was recently the confirmation that we won't have as many events compared to last year or things to work towards on a weekly basis, like aftermarket parts. There's not enough context just yet to really say, hey, we're not going to see these XP events every single week, or hey, we're not going to see these challenge events every week where there's like camo rewards that you can end up getting. There was mention that Treyarch is working on something dubbed very, very cool, but we don't know what that is just yet. So whether or not it's, again, something that we don't work towards aftermarket parts obviously they're not going to be there in this game or if it's something affecting the event scale at large we don't know but it seems like there's going to be a little bit less post-launch support in that regard compared to this year on-demand texture streaming is also something i think you should be aware of this year with black ops 6 when you go to buy the game it is going to be something that is required this year in modern warfare 3 modern warfare 2 and a couple of years beforehand when they started introducing this as a genuine player side option on-demand texture streaming was something that was optional you could choose to localize the files or to save some of the download size you could end up streaming that data well, now it is going to be something that is explicitly streaming required. So you will not have the option to localize some of those high quality assets and those things that will be those textures going into the game. So that means that if you don't have the best internet connection, you might see a noticeable difference with Black Ops 6 compared to Modern Warfare 3 or Modern Warfare 2, because it's going to try and download more data in real time to give you that accurate picture rather than pulling from localized files. So know that one going in as well. And the final things that I would say that are things you should be aware of before you buy, well, there's two things that are kind of the things we're always going to touch on, beating a dead horse, but I'd be remiss not to say it. There has been nothing talked about with skill-based matchmaking being changed and nothing when it comes to the ricochet anti-cheat no updates on either of those friends so if those things have absolutely bothered you to no end with modern warfare 3 modern warfare 2 warzone whatever the case it's not going to change it's going to be something that you're going to still have to live with that you might still be seeing cheaters you might still be playing the biggest sweat lords you've ever seen in your life but that stuff it's not really looking like it's going to change, unfortunately, right now. If that was the case, we'd probably hear about it leading up, and it'd be a big selling point. But we haven't, and so thus, wouldn't get my hopes up for any adjustments here with this one. So will that knock the game down a few pegs for you? That's entirely up to you. Now, let's talk about my sort of recommendation. Every single buyer's guide, we do this where I'll talk about what I think is the best bang for your buck. Don't take this as anything more than a personal anecdote. Do what you want with your money. If you like a version and you're going to get it, absolutely. If you disagree with me, 
that's totally cool but just for my own personal sake and giving my logical perspective on it if we're taking out the fact that i make content on this game out of the equation i kind of think that honestly just the digital standard this year is the most worthwhile version of the game with a slight asterisk on that for some players and we'll get there in a second while given the monetary breakdown it's still perhaps worthwhile like black cell for the vault edition is 20 dollars alone mastercraft bundles will probably be in the shop for the equivalent of another 20 if not more and then the operator scans and the gobble gum but to me it's just it's not as worthwhile for the stuff that i care about i honestly don't ever care about operator skins it's a first person game all i'm going to see are my hands gobble gums you're going to be able to earn those just by simply playing the game so 12 additional ones again not really a deal breaker for me but when it comes to things like the vault edition that come down to the black cell and the mastercraft bundles that's where I think it loses value, in my opinion. Right up front, previous years, you'd end up getting more Battle Pass tier tokens. And frankly, this year's rather, I'd say, intentionally ambiguous with how they word it. And I don't really care for that. What I mean, again, is that as advertised, it says Black Cell and 20 tier skips. Last year, we talked about it said Black Cell and 50 tokens. But that only afforded you the 50 tokens. So by that same logic, it means that this year, you're only getting the Black Cell bundle. You're missing out on 30 additional tiers by comparison to what we had in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3's Vault Edition, which is an additional $40 in value they're taking out of that bonus. So that's something that I think devalues that Vault Edition again, where I don't really care about the things that maybe that makes up for it with the other $40 of the Gobble Gum and the Operator Skins. The stuff that I would use, it's not as much there. Secondly, the Vault Edition blueprints, I actually don't see as worthwhile anymore after the introduction of these campaign blueprints. It's the same guns, same permanent unlocks possible, just for free, instead of paying that $30 upcharge, where if you can take a few hours before jumping into multiplayer and play that campaign, you're going to save 30 bucks on those unlocks. So unless you want those skins, you can get the same permanent unlock features for free. So with that said, I think the digital standard is just fine. You get access to the game, you end up getting those bonuses right now in terms of the Reflect 115 camo, Woods Operator Pack. That Yeah, sure, you only got a limited time use out of that, or if you want to jump back to Warzone, it's honestly still a good baseline value there with that. You save 20 bucks from the blueprints, you may pay the $20 later, but you're still saving a few bucks long term, even if you do get that Season 1 bundle later on down the line, if you don't care about the Operator Pack and the Gobble Gum right now. But with that said, if you are on Xbox, genuinely, I do think that you have the best outcome here for this, because technically you can get the digital standard edition free with Game Pass. That, yes, you are paying a subscription fee, but I'm going to assume that you're also buying Game Pass for other games that you're playing in your catalog, meaning that this is only an addition to that active library, not the reason that you're buying it. And if it is, you might want to reconsider because by the end of the year, you'd end up paying more in Game Pass than you would for the standard version of the game. But if you're actively playing other games through Game Pass on Xbox or on PC, that's honestly a solid deal to just add Black Ops 6 to that. And I think it's probably the best option. Now, again, if you are waiting for a sale, again, more power to you. I think that's also a very valid option as well. But do recognize that pre-order bonus content like the Woods Operator Pack and the Reflect 115 Pack are not going to be there. And again, granted, it might not necessarily be the worst thing in the world because at that point you're in Black Ops 6. You're probably not going to be playing too much Modern Warfare 3. But it is something that just, again, for the sake of being thorough, just know that it wouldn't actually be accompanying your purchase of the game. But anyways, that's where I'm at. That's my pros and cons, what I think are some of the things that are good and bad about different variations, the differences and the sort of subtle changes that aren't super marketed about each of the versions and some things that I think are some crucial information that you should know before you make a purchase of any of the versions. So that said, that's we're gonna wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think here of this? Do you agree with the sort of logic, the pros and cons, whatever the case? Drop your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor, drop a like on it. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to so almost a single thing running all things Black Ops 6 as we gear up for launch. Lots of stuff upcoming, so I'd love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.